Who are you? What do you do on the internet? And what can people expect from your content? You know, obviously, my name is Evan. Um, I go by Lego Creator on all platforms. A lot of people like to poke fun that it's Lego Crater because of how it actually looks with the username. But I didn't like how the E looks. So, you know, I took it out there and just went with the CR8. But I primarily started on Instagram, I should say, branched off into TikTok a little bit. And to be honest, I got into the Twitch world because of you and um, Fred, you know, when we met at Brickslow. So that's mainly the reason I'm on Twitch here. And I'd, I'd like to get the YouTube going a little bit. So primarily I'm an Instagrammer, I should say. So you're you're busy. You're all over you're all over the place. You're trying to make it work on different uh, platforms. It's an interesting thing trying to make different content for different platforms. So we were talking about earlier trying to make, like I was trying to make things work on short form versus the other stuff that we're, we're working on. You mentioned Instagram. How did you get your start on making content? What brought you into the, the fold of making things? So I used to be on my private account. And somehow I would start seeing Lego pop up and maybe I was searching it. I don't know, you know, but you know how the algorithm works, that it starts shooting things to you that you're, you know, into. So I'd see some of these, you know, content creators that were already on there. I enjoyed seeing some people, there were some people going live and, you know, I didn't know what that was about. And I would be like, I want to jump in here and I would jump in on their live streams and I wanted to comment. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to comment from a private account. So I was like, all right, I need to make an account for myself. Um, I like a lot of the Lego creator sets. Uh, now the newly icons theme. Right. But, um, you know, I really enjoyed just going on these live streams and kind of trying to get involved with what they were talking about. I was a city builder, you know, primarily back then. So I just wanted to post a couple of my photos of my city. And, you know, that's kind of how I got the start in it. Took a little bit of time, I should say, before I got really comfortable posting a lot more. I want to say I was one of the first jumping in on the reels on Instagram when they first primarily were rolling out. And it, a lot of it was just showing Lego, not even putting myself out there. And after time, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go all in on this. Like, I'm going to put my face on there. I'm going to put who I am out there. And I'm just going to go with it. And, you know, that's kind of where I went in the Instagram world. And now it's now I do just dumb, crazy reels. <laughs> you know, I, I try to make people laugh, you know, when I put myself out there. And, you know, that, that people proximity wise, I should say, have seen my stuff, you know. So it's gotten to a point where the neighbors know about it and, you know, family and friends know about it. So, you know, I'm I'm, I'm just like, hey, this is me. Love it or hate it. This is what I'm about now. So, how long? How how many years has it been, or how long in general since you started uh, on Instagram? So I think around 2020 um, mm -hmm. October. So I mean, pandemic kind of pushed me into it, like a lot of people that right. got into you know putting themselves on you know any social media network at that point. So I, th I think I was watching stuff maybe in the the summer and like you know, right when it really started happening. But October is when I was like, all right, I got to make my own account now. Mm. Get involved in this. Three years you're going three and on. Three years, yeah. Three and a half almost. years. That's Close. impressive. That's impressive. And like last time I looked at your account on Instagram, I want to say it was at 107,000 or something around that. Surprisingly, yeah, it that got up there. And I have no clue how, to be honest. <laughs> you have I no mean, clue. If you could credit one thing about what you do on Instagram, what would it be in terms of like, what do you think actually made it so popular? You know, if, if I would have to say anything, I would say it's the relatability of it, you know, um, that I just, I think the things that I put out there, people actually can see themselves in some way, shape or form being a part of that. Um, a lot of the things that I did in the very beginning was, Stuff with my wife. I mean, she, my wife hates being on <laughs> any social network. So, you know, it was really tough, you know, putting her on a couple of the things. But that was the start of what I did. And kind of just became like a joke. Like, you know, I have a wife that hates Lego. 
she loves to troll me and you know i'm the nerdy lego guy that yeah. you know how did i end up getting my wife in the first place <laughs> that that's definitely relatable i myself find very much the same situation where i'm a nerdy lego guy i'm a nerdy gamer i'm you know this nerdy dude and you know my wife's definitely not at all on that side of things and isn't into those same things we have a lot of other common interests but definitely not not lego and so from all the the reels that i've looked at of yours and and scrolling through your content there's definitely that relatability of like yes I've been in that situation myself many, many times. Yeah, in, in those three years, I guess my, my question to you would be how how do you think you've grown in, in terms of like when you were learning Instagram to where you are now? Like what kind of things have you figured out over the years? I think in the beginning, it was more just trial and error of stuff where, you know, nobody knew what was good when you were making reels, you know, when reels really started coming about with, Instagram really starting to push that, you know, I would do trending audios thinking, oh, that's what I need to do or some silly dance thing with, you know, having a Lego set with me. And over time, I've learned to do just what I enjoy. I think that's the biggest thing that people need to realize is don't worry about putting something out there for somebody else. It's you have to have fun with it. You have to enjoy what you're putting out there. And I think people can actually see that come through a lot more on the screen rather than me just trying to, you know, be what people I ex or people expect me to want to be or what they're expecting for me. It's you don't know what you're going to get for me. I'm going to be me. Hopefully, you know, you enjoy what I put out there. It makes you smile a little bit or you can laugh. But, you know, the authenticity, you know, just being authentic and just being myself. Yeah, I think that comes through a lot better on the screen. It's the cool factor in the chat says genuine content is better than forced content. And it sounds like that is firmly what you believe. Uh, I see 100%. that. Yeah, I see that in what you do. And that's a recurring and There was theme. periods where I, I would try to force content out there. Like, and I think people have that, you know, people have a reel that, you know, does really well for them. And and they want to recreate that magic. Like, how did that do really well? Let me try to do the exact same thing. And when I've, you know, tried to chase that viral reel again, like I thought something was going to be great that went out there and it met all the, you know, standards of what the first one did. And then it tanked. And, yeah. you know, as soon as I got that out of my head, that doesn't matter what the numbers are. Let me just do what I enjoy. Like, that was the biggest thing. That's definitely a good note, and we, we see that often when talking to creators on this show. I'm glad that you, you pointed out a moment where it wasn't really something that was necessarily true to you. I, I, I think I think a lot of us creators do, especially when on your on the short form stuff, we notice the, the trends very easily. And we want to get on that bandwagon. We want to uh, maybe get a piece of that, you know, virality that's going on with uh whatever is happening with a particular trend but then and everybody's trying to chase it early they're looking for that next big trend but you are the trend you're the one that can go out and do something those things are always i think it when when you look at it in context of like a content creator those can be at best a flash in the pan right like at at best like maybe maybe it will go viral or get some wider uh, viewership than your usual thing, but that's not that's not a way to steadily grow, right? That's not a way to to continue to actually build a viewership or a community. They can be useful, but not if they're they're aligned with what you're doing, right? Like if it's not already fitting in with the kind of content you're already doing, it's not really helpful. One hundred percent agree with that. I mean, the first reel that I ever had that went big. And I mean, I must have posted 100, maybe 120 reels before I had one that really popped off. And it was me putting money into a Lego set, saying the best place to hide money. And like that reel got 24 million for me. Yeah, they picked up a lot of followers, but 
I wasn't about like not being in the screen. I wanted to be a part of being on my content and not just doing something silly like that. Yeah, I mean, it was nice that it helped grow, but at the same time, that wasn't the type of content I wanted to put out there. So if you were to describe like the content that you really aim for when you sit down to make a reel, what how would you describe or encapsulate that? So now what I'm looking for when I'm making something is will I laugh from it? And the, like I watch my own reel sometimes, like, you know, before I'll post it, just like everybody does. And if it makes me laugh a little bit, I'm awesome. That's great for me to put out there. If I don't feel that laughter, like that, it makes me happy putting it out there. It, it just stays in my drafts and nobody sees the light of day. That initial reel that you talked about that kind of blew up for you. I remember seeing that. I actually remember seeing that in my feed and laughing at it. And then uh, I think it took me it took me a while to connect that that was you because I'd seen it at a different time. And then I went back to look at your profile. I was like, oh, it's, it was Evan. That's cool. Early on when you were starting this whole thing, would you say that's changed at all? Or how has how has that evolved in the last couple of years for you? So in the beginning, I was I was scared to put myself out there. Mm. Um, so, you know, I I always felt like. I had funny things that I could put out there, but I just didn't have the confidence to want to put it out there. So, I, I mean, it's a big change in that. It was it was the change of, I don't care what people think. I'm not going to let the fear of people telling me, look at this man child that's posting Lego. You know, that I'm not going to let that hold me back anymore. Or, you know, even a friend or family member that saw something of mine. That's not going to keep me from doing what I love and enjoy. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, I first off, first and foremost, love and enjoy what I'm doing. And I want the world to see that, you know, people can be happy and passionate about things that they like. And I think a lot of people get scared to, to show off the passions that they have in life because of what society tells them. And that's not a way to live. I think that is absolutely true. And especially like when any of us get started on this sort of thing, I think we're often afraid of what we what we put out there is going to make us look stupid or silly or whatever it is. And then or that we're going to be judged for what we're doing. But honestly, the more the more of ourselves we put out there, the more we will find people who will connect with that and actually appreciate that content or follow or whatever, right? They'll, they'll be more invested because they see a part of who they are in that, in that content. And then they'll want to follow you or at least engage with it. So you'll find your people. I mean, we don't live anywhere near each other. And, you know, there's people in countries that I would never think that I'd be chatting with. But, you know, who would have thought that bricks would bring me together with the like-minded people around the world that, you know, are now my people? Yeah. It's incredible. It's true. And, and yeah, if it wasn't for Lego, I wouldn't have a lot of the friends that I talk to all the time today, right? So I, I'm, I'm with you on that. So my closest friends right now are people who I met through online communities that are into Lego, like particularly the the Twitch Lego community, but also a lot of you out there uh, that I've met now who are on the other platforms or just AFOLs in general. It's it's pretty incredible. Uh, you know, speaking of, speaking of Lego and speaking of of the brick, what what got you into the hobby? Like, how how long have you been into Lego, and and what what's that whole story like? Well, I've been into Lego a very long time. Um, I mean, you can see I'm lighting up with how you know long I've been in a part of this, you know, journey here of Lego. But, yeah. um, I mean, it started for me 1989. That's the very first set that I can really remember. And I've had sets before 89, but it was, a uh, you know, the black seas Barracuda, it was a pirate ship. Um, this is one of the largest, you know, Lego sets of that period that came out. Yeah. And I remember, you know, I was walking at Toys R Us and this is, you know, when they had every toy there, you know, a lot of people don't get to experience what a Toys R Us is today. Um, it's like a small section now in a store, but 
it had every toy you could think of. And, and I would always bolt right to the Lego aisle, just looking at all the sets that they had. And, you know, the pirate ship that, that called to me. I know I had a, a couple little sets before that, but that one was one of the very first sets that really got me into it. Um, and, and I mean, I probably from 89 to maybe 97, um, you know, and this is showing my age here, but, uh, you know, I was really into Lego for that whole stage of my life. I was building, you know, my own creations a lot more when I was younger, um, because, you know, your imagination was wild as a kid. Yeah. I mean, I was getting all the themes, every, everything I was into it all space, Western, uh, pirates castle. I mean, that, that was the prime time age of Lego when I think want to say the early nineties, mid nineties. And, you know, I got out of it for a little bit and I saw the Lego movie in 2014. I mean, when I saw that and I saw that city that they had in the basement, I was like, man, I used to love Lego as a kid. Like I need to like, look back into this. And I, to be honest, I started getting the Lego movie sets, you know, I was like, ah, I feel like I'm president business, you know, <laughs> where I want to get all my stuff out. And from the Lego movie, even I ended up getting all my childhood sets back. I gave my sets to my sister and she has three boys and all three of them played with all the Lego that I had as a kid. And once I had kids, I got it all back. And I have every single set from when I was a kid still in this room, which uh, that amazes me to, you know, cause not too many people get lucky enough to have their childhood sets. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I started rebuilding a lot of them and then I was like, all right, I see the modulars, the creator expert, um, you know, series. And I was like, I need to get these. And after building a couple buildings, I was hooked. Like it was, you can't stop this train anymore. That's an incredible story. And and like you pointed out, not, not a lot of people can say that they still even had their sets from when they were a kid. I can't say that because uh, actually right around the same time in that same time period as you, I was also into Lego. I was really into space. Uh, I, I particularly, although uh, I did have some pirate sets that I really, really loved at the time, but I remember like vividly, like sometimes, you know, I look back at lists of old sets and I could point out all the ones that I had that I remember from memory and I don't have them anymore. So for you to say, oh yeah, I still like, I went back and I got those. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool to say. Uh, and the fact that you have them with you to this day is, is amazing. So you, you've had Lego as a big part of your life, uh, as a kid, you kind of, I think like some of us had some form of dark ages, but then you came back and now it's like, probably bigger than ever right uh it's it's like that nostalgia where like i remember playing with lego as a kid was some of the best times you know that i had and here i get to do that now even with my kids and i'm having just as good as a time as i had when i was a kid if not better because now i have adult money it makes it a lot more fun to do a hobby especially i mean this is an expensive hobby but to be able to do this still and build with my kids it's it's that's a joy that is like no other yeah absolutely i i think it's great to be able to pass that on uh, my own kids love lego as well and uh that is one of the things we get to sit and and actually that we both enjoy uh doing together and then also now you know you make content out of it as well what what's it like for you to also take this hobby that you're so passionate about but then it also is a bit of a, a a thing that you you focus on. I mean, I know you're not completely focused on making content out of the Lego. That's not the only reason why you love it. But uh, taking that time to also make content out of that does that ever turn you off to to playing with Lego or or being in the hobby at all? So there's periods where I actually enjoy making content more than doing Lego. And then there's the same, you know, flip side to that where I really am into Lego and I just take a little break from posting online, which I think a lot of people have that, you know, ebb and flow of, you know, even posting stuff. But 
when I take my break, it's because I'm recharging and I'm trying to remember why I even like making the content in the first place. You know, I, I don't want to just, again, going back to forcing something out there. Mm-hmm. I don't just want to keep making something just because now I have this account. So if, you know, if I'm not enjoying, it's not being put out there in the world until I get that joy back. So what motivates you? What keeps what keeps you motivated to actually make things uh, while you're while you're making uh, videos or other content out there? I think when I see stuff, you know, I, everybody's online, you know, I, I have a bad habit of not being able to sleep. So I'll be sitting in bed and I'm scrolling reels and, you know, my big secret that, you know, I'll do with a reel. I know a lot of people might see something and like, then forget about it when they wake up the next morning. If I see a reel that I enjoy, I'm sending it, I'm DMing it to myself. And writing a little note with it, kind of like how people sit with a notepad, like, hey, this was the idea I was thinking of, you know, and I'll reread it in the morning and see if it was something that, you know, I really want to end up doing. But I mean, that's, I feel like a lot of my inspiration on reels comes from me just late night scrolling, maybe seeing some other people's content and sending it to myself with that little note in my message. So, I mean, if I showed you my DMs to myself, It would look like I'm a crazy person, like talking to myself there. (laughs) Yeah. I do the same method, actually, to be honest with you, when it comes to like, when I think about, uh, not so much, I'm not, I'm not into like the reels the way that you are, right? A lot of my reels are just highlights and clips. But when I think about either questions to talk about or topics to talk about with other creators, or when I have an idea for something to do on a live stream. I send myself, um, I use Discord. I send myself a Discord message and I have a, a basically a Discord uh, channel that's just full of me taking notes for ideas or things that I want to do for the stream or for the show. And yeah, same deal, dude. So I totally, I totally understand what that's like. Are there, are there particular creators that you like to watch and follow uh, in terms of that sort of inspiration? I mean, that, to be honest, I, there's nobody in particular, you know, and I don't, I don't want to name drop anybody. Sure. Um, but there, there's a ton of creators that, you know, I love watching. Um, ones that, you know, do more original stuff. I tend to like that a lot better than people doing the trends. And it's not that I, you know, I like seeing a trend audio, you know, just like everybody else does. But, you know, that doesn't ignite me or get me going or, you know, get my juices flowing on wanting to make something. But a lot of people, you know, I've been noticing lately are getting that, you know, creativity out there and, and being original. And I don't know if it's a force of, you know, where content's going, where they want you to be a little bit longer with, you know, your content and not just do a quick, you know, five to second trending audio Um, but I mean, I, I've been enjoying seeing people's originality and I think that's a big thing. Like if, if you show me who you are through a reel, I'm going to gravitate towards that a lot more than somebody that's, you know, just doing the, you know, traditional, I saw this from somebody else and I'm just going to remake it and put it out there. Absolutely. I mean, that goes back to our talk about trends and, and, Uh, being able to kind of distinguish the difference between is this something that I'm doing just to hop on a a like a a fad or is this genuinely something that I should be doing myself for for the the content that I like to produce have you ever had like what kind of moments have really inspired you though when you've been going through your reels late at night without any sleep is there any was there ever a time that you like saw something you're like, I really need to make something like this minute. I've had a bunch of those happen. Um, and my wife will look at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I can't forget this idea. It's, (laughs) it's gotta be done right now. So I mean, I've had time where I'll wake up at two in the morning and all of a sudden I'm scrolling and I see something and I come right down here because I know like it's gotta be done right now. Um, and I think, 
it the spontaneity of it, like me seeing it and then doing it immediately, I think turns out a lot better than me kind of overthinking it. Mm. And I think a lot of people sometimes will do that where they'll overthink some of the, uh, you know, content that they're putting out there and it kind of gets lost. That's a really good point. When you do, when you make like a reel, uh, generally speaking, is like, how often do you plan those out compared to say, like you said, they're more spontaneous? I mean, it's, I have a lot of reels saved up in my draft. So um, if I can't think of something that, you know, I just came out with, then I just go back into that, you know, draft reel where I can just post something because I do like to stay on a kind of consistent schedule. I've noticed that the more consistent you are with schedules, the better it is. And it doesn't matter what your schedule is, but stick to that. You know, if you're posting at 12 o'clock every day, you should continue to post at that time every day. People expect, you know, something to come out for you or, you know, it's going to push you a little bit better, at least on Instagram by them learning your habits. So, um, I, I try to just stick to the schedule with it. If I can be spontaneous within that schedule and, and that's the goal is to try to beat my time clock of when I want to post something. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, if I see something, I'm doing it, and I'm trying to get it out as quick as I can because I, I think that's the best way to go. I agree. I I, I completely agree with that. Can, do you, can you tell me about a time like where that was the case, where it was such a spontaneous idea, and then it ended up being great? What what kind of reels like stick out most in your mind in terms of stuff that you've posted? All right. So I mean, recently. The, you know, it, it didn't turn out to be a great reel in terms of numbers, but in terms of, you know, what I thought it was as a good reel, um, was everybody started, you know, the series 25 minifigs that just came out mm -hmm. and everybody's talking about the QR codes <laughs> and, you know, not being able to feel the bags like they used to. Yeah. And as soon as I saw like, it was, I think it was the, the second person I saw that was posting about the QR codes. <laughs> the idea came into my head that I got to do this real, where it was me basically not being able to feel the bag and me getting a duplicate CMF. Yeah. And I, I had so much fun filming that one. You know, that, that was the first time recently that I, I did a two camera edit on top of it. So it was me trying something different. I had to get on that immediately. I mean, I was going to stores trying to find CMFs <laughs> just to just to post it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a really good time with that one. Uh, that was just me, you know, immediately seeing something where I had to run out and you know try to find a damn CMF just for yeah. the freaking post there. That was the hardest part. So. Yeah, I th I think that's a great uh, that's a great example and definitely. Um, it's always cool when like the inspiration strikes and you have a, a direction that you want to push towards and then you can just execute on it. And there's this really fun reel that you made that you really are proud of and that you're able to post out there. What's it, what's it like for you? Like when you feel like you have no good ideas, like what, what what's the flip side, right? Of that whole thing. So, I mean, when, when there's, there's moments that that happened and that, and that's when I take my breaks, like that's the, I got to recharge, like, nothing's coming to me. I'm, I'm in a rut. And this happens to everybody where, you know, sometimes you just lose that creativity. Uh, there was a period, I want to say from September of 22 to maybe close to November, like I wasn't really posting much. Um, and it was, I wasn't sure if I still wanted to keep posting at that point. I, you know, I lost the, the joy I had and, you know, just having fun doing even Lego at that point, it was more of a, am I just buying sets to just buy them to make content or am I even enjoying what I'm doing with this stuff? So, yeah. um, you know, I took that little break. I, I got the recharge and I came right back like, yeah, I do like this. And 
I do like making content. So, yeah. I, I mean, there's the moments where you just got to tell yourself like, hey, you don't have to be consistent every day. I know that, you know, I was just saying a second ago, you try to be consistent with the schedule. But if you need a moment to to take a break from it, you know, I still enjoyed coming online and, and seeing other people's stuff, but I wasn't enjoying at that moment, you know, putting anything out there. So taking a break, detaching for a little while so you could maybe get kind of back into that mindset and then returning when you felt like you were ready to. Was there like, was there any time where you're just like, I I'd never want to do this again? I, I don't think I've had that exact moment. I mean, the closest is that, that, you know, me talking about just a little bit ago, you know, that was the closest I ever came to not wanting to do it. But the relationships that I have with people really kind of inspire me to want to put stuff out there too, because, you know, I want to make them laugh a little bit and, you know, not everybody has the the happiness in the world that, you know, things are tough for people. And maybe coming online and seeing something post from somebody is what actually, you know, is something they have to look forward to. There's a lot of people that, you know, I look forward to seeing them post something. And the serotonin it gives me to see, like, them doing it, you know, it's like I chuckle. And... I appreciate them like putting it out there for me to see and get to have that laugh with them. You know, even though obviously we're not laughing together, but we are. Yeah. That's cool to hear. Definitely. Uh, I'm, I've been there many, like many times in terms of like where I, I'm either taking a break or I'm not quite feeling as uh, creative or motivated to make something, but then I'll go on Twitch or I'll go on Instagram and I'll, I'll see what's out there. I'm like, you know what? This is great. The, you know, especially seeing the people that I, I, I know and I, I like to actually interact with and talk to. And then I'm usually back at it not too long after that. So I completely understand that feeling. I've been getting a, like a nice recharge from the Twitch community. Yeah. Like I didn't, I, I didn't know about the, you know, Twitch community really until, we went to Brick Slopes this past uh, August here. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I think the the relationships that you guys have, have on here is the same way that Instagram was. Mm. And is I feel it, it's becoming again. I, I feel like it got lost a little bit when TikTok kind of took over for some people. Mm -hmm. But then people kind of came back to Instagram, which was nice. So... Tell me about your your experiences with Twitch. So you mentioned that at Brick Slopes, uh, you you got to know some of us. You know, you and I met in person there, which was awesome. It was great to hang out with you and 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 Ben and Tacos. Uh, you met me and and I believe Fred and probably Ace and all them. Tell me about what it's like coming from like the Instagram side of things, as well as a little bit of YouTube and like seeing this whole other corner on Twitch. What, give me, give me your first impression when you started consuming that sort of thing. So my first impression, to be honest, was, you know, am I too old for Twitch? Mm -hmm. Is, you know, is, is, is this something that I can even get into? Cause it seems like it's a lot of younger, you know, people that are on Twitch here. And, mm -hmm. you know, I feel not to say it, but in the world of like, Lego, I feel like I'm almost a boomer, um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it, it, that was my first, you know, take of it. And that's what kind of held me back from even coming on there. But, you know, meeting you guys in Utah, like, and, you know, learning about personalities that you guys had and then seeing it transcend into what you guys put out in the Twitch world and then the community that you have behind it, um, you know, it, it was inviting. I should say to, you know, make me want to come in here and it, it's, it's a positive vibe, which I like that, um, you know, Instagram kind of has its highs and lows where, you know, it can be very positive, but then it can have some toxic, you yeah. know, traits to it as well. And Twitch there, you know, nothing is toxic on here, which that I think is the number one thing that, you know, I love about the Twitch, you know, world that you guys all do. It's yeah. all, you're all supporting each other, whether it's your charity events, you know, or just being on, you know, streaming, 
and everybody just, you know, having a good time with you guys. I mean, that's, that's what I look for, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I've said this so many times on this show before, and I say it during my streams, but I, 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 I still stand by it, right? The, the Lego Twitch community, probably one of the best online communities I've been a part of in general, but also when it comes to like, even within Twitch, it's probably a lot, a lot of the nicest people I, I've ever met on the platform. I'll, I'll be honest, because there are, uh, you know, some people will say there's a lot of gaming like communities that are are quite toxic. Uh, it's true, and you can find them on Twitch. It's it's not. There's no hiding it. There's there's certain areas of the of the community on Twitch that can be quite negative and toxic. However. Having seen a lot of them and then coming over to the Lego side of things, I generally don't have a bad experience with like anyone in the Lego community. In the last, I want to say, almost three years of my time being involved with it, it's always it's always been awesome. It's always, I mean, occasionally there's a little drama. I don't think you can avoid it when it comes to getting a bunch of personalities together uh, in an online community. But there's no, like, straight up, like, hey, you're not welcome here, you know, or hey, you're not you're not a part of this group. And, and, and definitely uh, the Lego or brick building Twitch community is is one of the best I've ever seen. So I'm glad that you got that. It makes me feel uh, validated <laughs> that people coming from other areas of the Internet are still seeing that, too. I get I guess my question to you now is like. What what about your experience and then now just like seeing what's on Twitch? What uh what what makes it so different? What like what 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 is so different about the Twitch side versus say the Instagram or YouTube side? On Instagram, it's more of you're getting to determine what you're putting out there. Right. You know, it's a, it's you're posting it or you're doing a reel. There's not that many live streams now that you know are happening on instagram anymore uh, a lot of people have you know tried to branch off to youtube from the instagram world or they saw the success that you know people had on twitch and they wanted to see about having a piece of that and i think when you're on you know twitch or even youtube there's it, it's it's scarier because you're putting more of yourself out there mm -hmm. you know and everything's up in real time where you know people can see you interact with you a little bit more it's not where you can kind of you know put the best version of yourself out there yeah and, and i think that's you know part of the you know excitement to it as well is like you're getting to be a part of something as opposed to you're just watching something mm -hmm. absolutely no that's a that's a good call out i think that's a great observation do you, do you have any, um, I guess, you know, you, you noted earlier how how I've been around Twitch for a long time. Do you have any particular questions for me or thoughts about the Twitch side of things that you want to ever talk about or, or ask? This is a good time um, because I know or when you when you and I were preparing for this, you're like, oh, can I ask you questions? <laughs> so do you have anything like you're like, man, what's this, what's the deal with this on Twitch or how do I make this happen? Whether it's a, you know, a general question or something more specific. So what was the hardest challenge you had with Twitch? Mm. You know, and, and cause you, you know, you said you, before we even jumped on here that you kind of started this, you know, in 2022 yeah. with crossing the streams, but you've been doing this since 2016. So yeah. How did you find where your strengths were throughout this platform? Where did you kind of deviate a little bit from how you started and find exactly where you wanted to be? Oh yeah. That's a great question. My biggest, my my biggest challenge, I think, like a lot of people who struggle on Twitch, I personally don't have a hard time talking. Like I could talk all day about anything. Give me a topic, I'll 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 run with it. I can come up with my own topics. But I think the biggest challenge that happens to every creator when you're out here, especially on Twitch specifically, is if you hit the live button and no one's in chat and you have nothing to talk about. So even though that I'm pretty good about talking my face off, uh, it was very uncomfortable. There were a lot of early streams where it was literally me 
and then maybe a friend who was watching who was half listening, if that. And so if I had a plan to be live for two or three hours, it was really hard to kind of get in that mode where I'd be streaming and finding things to talk about. And so that was that's really tough. I know a lot of newer streamers or streamers who are trying to grow often bring this up. And for, for me, I was no different. And, and honestly, how I overcame that was a lot of just experience, a lot of time in figuring out who I am when I'm streaming, right? The things that I like to talk about or share or actually uh, take time to go over. But I think, I think that's really tough for a lot of people. So uh, I, know, I know even I can struggle with it and I consider myself fairly approachable. And I like to talk, but even I can struggle with that, especially when I first started. It was really difficult. So, yeah, that was that so was. So that brings. So, what would you recommend for somebody that was starting? Like for somebody like me, that you know, you brought up a great point. Like you're talking. Like I've done a couple of my own, you know, streams on here, mm -hmm. and there might be like three or four people mm -hmm. that are on here. Just like you're saying, like, what would you suggest to somebody that wants to try to keep going on here? that has that now fear of who am I even chatting with when I'm yeah. on here? Yeah. Uh, basically when I was trying to figure that out, I would mentally kind of prepare a list of like things that I could, I could talk about in that window of time. I know not everyone is the same way in terms of like being able to keep that in mind. So for those who especially struggle with that more, I've told people to, I was like, this is going to sound silly, but get either a notepad or something where you can say, like, here's five things that I I could talk about today if I ever feel stuck, right? Like, if I ever feel like I can't talk about, and they don't have to be any kind of profound topic or anything amazing. It could be literally, like, yeah, I had... I had the most interesting interaction in the last Uber I rode uh, this week, right? Like, I had the weirdest talk, right? Or uh, even things as mundane as, yeah, you know what? I did walk down the Lego aisle today, and these are the sets that I saw that I wanted. So it can, it can, it depends on what your taste is. And if, if this is an exercise that might seem silly, I, I agree it does. But if you do it enough times, you start to not just have hard things that you could look at on a list, but you also start to figure out this is the stuff that I do want to, to speak to. This is the stuff that I can verbally bring up uh, on stream when things feel a little slow. Right. And, and I also tell streamers or, or those that want to grow or that are new to it, that often you may have a completely inactive chat room. It doesn't mean there aren't people listening, people often will choose to to listen and lurk and not say a word. They'd rather just leave you up and listen in the background or actively watch. They may not say anything, but use that opportunity when you're coming up with that list of things. Also look at, at it through the lens of, is this something that would spark a conversation? Is this something that would cause someone in my chat to stop what they're doing and type in it and, and say something. I use a little trick where I try to be a little controversial with the things that I say. Nothing like crazy, nothing to say like to off put people, but like the level of like, is pineapple a topping that belongs on pizza, right? Like, like that level of controversy where it's like, maybe it's personal taste that someone might disagree with you on, but the, that'll bring them out of lurk. And that is definitely a really cool trick because you'll often see people come out of the woodwork when you start making statements like that or asking questions. Um, AZ Pinoy and Chess says medium well steak is a sin. So like those, those, are, <laughs> those are the kind of things that you can spur conversation with. So if you're like, Hey, I got a semi controversial take, or if maybe you don't have a take, but you know that it would make people uh, say something in response to it. Those, those are things that I, 
I use in in my uh, little tool toolbox of things that uh, spur conversation. And you know what? I I don't consider myself a big streamer. I don't consider myself someone that's very popular. And there are moments in my chat where it starts to slow down. And if people are paying attention and they know that I have this trick, they'll they'll spot those moments when it it is oh a more's a more's pulling that because he's trying to get people to engage. So. Yeah, that's that's why I do. I love that. I mean, I'm taking notes, and I'm going to have that for my uh, future yeah. streams that I'll try on here. So <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, you you you're trying to get on. You know, you're trying to do more Twitch. Uh, you know, we let's talk a little bit about uh, that. Uh, is there is there anything in terms like of Twitch content that you're looking at doing or? Uh, that you've 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 experimented with in the past. So I think the toughest thing, you know, and biggest challenge for me on Twitch is it's not like I could at least take a video that I've done that I pre-recorded mm -hmm. and put it out there. And I, I don't know if maybe you can do that where you can pre-record and even upload something. Um, I, I almost feel like that would be a little easier for me mm -hmm. if I, I could have a pre-recorded, you know, thing that I'm throwing out there so that I'm not stuck and and looking at a chat and seeing nobody's out there that I'm talking to and I'm this crazy guy that's you know on here by myself yeah with a lego set wondering do I need to just log off of this yeah so it, that, I mean it, it's scary for me being on here being live you know I run yeah. out of topics and ideas for myself so that's a good that's a good um point that you're making uh ultimately pre-recorded things don't really work as well here uh there's nothing to say to stop you from doing that but i i would say that the reason a lot of people like to tune in on twitch is that like oh hey this person is a real person that's on i can chat at them in real time and they'll respond so if it's pre-recorded it, it definitely doesn't doesn't work well here uh they do have a story system that they've introduced to their mobile app. So if there are things that you want to like post and push out to your followers is, is a particular uh, thing that you could take advantage of, especially since you're so familiar with the Instagram side of things. That's a, a relatively new thing. Twitch has been getting off the ground on their side. Uh, AZ Pinoy posts a really good point. You can stream yourself filming things that you're doing for insta so like you can tackle it like a behind the scenes like hey i'm gonna record this hang out with me while i do this that that is a, a potentially good vector to go and down i love that that's i think a really I, awesome uh suggestion there yeah a az pinoy that's a great suggestion and honestly i think that works great because you have built an audience already on instagram so if you're like, hey, you want to see how I'm doing this? I'm going to take the next hour or however long you want to spend on Twitch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to film it. Uh, film film a reel. Hang out with me while I do this. That's a very good uh, direction. Uh, one, one thing you could do, and this came up uh, not too long ago on a previous episode, is if you ever feel, uh, this was from Pez Liz, uh, she said, if you ever feel like you're not sure how to fill that time, bring a friend on. So you could chat back and forth at them, use it as like a, as like a collaboration where you're just talking. Maybe you're both like pick an activity. Maybe you're both building a set, which would be the, the most straightforward thing you could do. Um, or you could talk about the latest Lego releases or whatever. Uh, but you, you could choose to find, like bring someone on and that helps fill a lot of that potential for like lo losing, losing track of a topic or not having something to speak to. Right. You can actually just have someone on and maybe have some stuff, especially someone that you maybe know well, or you, you can banter well with, then you can fill a lot of that awkward, I don't know what to talk about space uh, on stream. So, yeah, that could work. That could work for sure. And these are all great things. So now I got some things to try out, which I'm, you know, excited about. So I'm already starting to get juices flowing. I love that, you know, yeah. 
uh, suggestion too from uh, AZ as well. So yeah. that's great. So yeah, that's very cool. And and honestly, I'll tell you now that that suggestion is so great because you don't see that often. Like there's not a, like you don't see that a lot. And so if there was ever an opportunity for someone like you who has him, I mean, you have a, a big following on Instagram. You can even like lean on that as part of the, the work that you're doing when you're on Twitch. You could say, Hey, I have a pretty big audience. I'm going to do my next reel on here live. And we can, you know, people, people will likely ask you questions about doing it. Maybe what you're, process is when you record a video or what the you know what the idea itself is for the reel you could even uh workshop it with your uh with your audience if people start to come on and and watch live you could say hey uh i don't know about this joke tell me if this joke is even funny right <laughs> right but yeah yeah, or I could just dance and shake. I could definitely do that too. I was going to say Panfranudo <laughs> in the comments, or you could just dance and shake that took us on screen for three hours straight. You got a knack for that, bro. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, you know, uh, you can you can see some of those uh, shenanigans on a full after dark. I'm sure, right? They they might make it a, make an appearance. We'll say. <laughs> <laughs> we uh they they call me the ass man on there so <laughs> let's talk a little bit about a full after dark so i've had ben on here uh but you know for those that don't know about the show tell us tell us what that show is what it's about and what what your part in it is so i mean for a while it was you know to to start off and we were talking in the very beginning how we did the reunion you know on uh what was it pre pre new year's eve but it started out that you know it was ben it was tacos it was annabelle it was rick and it was something you know that they just did every saturday and it wasn't it was lego people just hanging out and letting loose a little bit and not just being about lego yes it it's lego people but at the same time it was you know what's going on in life Let's have a fun time. Let's, you know, play drinking games. And, you know, I, I saw that. And to be honest, like we used to do that before it was even called a fall after dark. Ben and I even did Saturday nights where, you know, we would just, you know, it was liquor live and Lego, you know, where we were just hanging out and, you know, we did do a little bit of Lego back then, but it was like a fun time. Like it was after hours, you know, kids are to be, you know putting the kids to bed um you know we're older so it's not like we're going out to a bar or anything but this was a way to hang out with people doing like-minded things and not feeling like you're you know sitting at home drinking by yourself so when they were doing that you know the the four of them you know I was always like thinking like man I would love to be on there with you know Ben we had such a great time on our Saturdays and it turned out that I'm not sure if it was Rick or, or Annabelle, but one of them, you know, was pretty much wanting to try something else and get into a little bit, you know, different type of Lego account. And for me, like I'm about the fun and, you know, I thought, wow, this would be right up my alley. Like I have a really good time with Ben when we do live streams. So, you know, I, I shot him a message like, Hey, if you ever need somebody, you know, on there, I'll be happy to be on there with you guys. So they brought me in on June, you know, just as like a guest and we had a great time. It, you know, we stayed just like you're saying how it goes a long time. Like we must've been up for, it was four or five hours. I feel like I went to bed at like two 30 my time, um, <laughs> wow. you know, it, real late night, you know, for me And here, I got to wake up at, you know, six 37 in the morning, every morning. So, um, for me, that's definitely a late night. But it was just so much fun. And after that first time that we went on together, you know, they were like, hey, why don't you, you know, come back the next week? And then it was the next week. So it just became a regular thing where, you know, they invited me to be a part of the uh, the trio of it now, which, you know, I have such a great time with them. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, again, it's not your Lego channel. 
So if you're looking for like that Lego conversation and to see somebody making something amazing or just building a set and chatting, like it's not for you. It's for the people that, you know, you can sit back, get yourself a drink, drink with us and just have fun. You know, you can put us on the background and there's something that's going to make you laugh in the middle of it. So hanging out, having a good time, talking about whatever comes up. So uh, definitely. And I think that's the best part. It's not scripted at all. Oh, like, yeah. W- we don't know where the night's going to go, you know, from the beginning <laughs> to where it ends. I mean, like, for for instance, last week, it that was it was a crazy thing where uh, Andre came on. We had a guest that came on with us and somehow it turned into people are sending tongue pics <laughs> to try to win a set. <laughs> I mean, this is how crazy like things get to. But. You know, people are DMing him their picture of their tongue to see if they could win a set. And it I didn't even know how it got there, but it got there. So <laughs> you don't I, know what to expect. I think I tuned in at some point when that was going on and I was already in the middle of something. So I couldn't pay as much attention as I wanted to. <laughs> but I was like, what is what what the hell is going on? But uh, yeah, that that's definitely accurate for the show it's both on youtube and twitch and what time what time do you guys normally go you guys normally so last year we used to start at 9 45 this year we decided nine o'clock it was a good time to kind of start it was a even time it wasn't like that weird like you know quarter you know time that we were doing so it's nine o'clock every saturday eastern standard time yeah so after this show, we'll be sure to bring everyone over to a full after dark. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. They're both, like I said, on YouTube and on Twitch. And certainly uh, there's no short shortage of uh, craziness or shenanigans that have the potential of showing up. Like you said, like you said, uh, tongue picks, which I don't even I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> know uh, how that I, still, I still don't know how it got there. So yeah, I was just a part of the ride enjoying what was going on. So yeah, that sounds accurate in terms of like the stuff that can happen on there. So what, what kind of thoughts or plans do you have for the future of a full after dark? What are you hoping to do and accomplish on there uh, with, with your co-hosts? So I think, you know, as we've discussed with, you know, each other that we want to, you know, obviously keep it fun. That's, the bread and butter of what we are, you know, just a a fun, you never know what you're going to get type of channel. Um, But we did start talking that, you know, I'd like to see it as a brand out there. Like there's a lot of a foals and, you know, for people that don't know the exact term, you know, it's adult fan of Lego and we're the after dark crew. You know, it's almost like you got these nerds that, you know, do stuff after the hours of Lego. And that's where we fall into that piece. So, um, you know, we, we wanted, I talking to you, we got into fourth wall where we're now, you know, having our own merchandise with it. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to see it get into a thing where, you know, it's a consistent Saturday, you know, we talked about wanting to bring in different guests and kind of letting their personalities of them sticking in their, you know, whatever space they are, you know, that we want them to just have fun with us and not worry about the regular stuff that they do, that this is their break to still have fun being online and not feeling like they have to do the same thing that they'll do, you know, on their own channels or if they don't even go on any channels, we, you know, it's about just having fun with people and seeing where the vibe takes us for the night. So, I mean, that's the big thing that, you know, we want to start doing this year is getting a lot of new faces on there. People that, you know, you haven't even seen um, and kind of see where it goes from there. So hopefully this year we can build upon that. And and I only see it getting bigger. Yeah, I had the uh, opportunity to hang out with you on there. And that was that was a blast. I had loads of fun. You guys are a riot and. I was laughing the whole time. So our own pan friend Nudo 
was on there too. He said he had a great time on the show shaking his tickets for Super Chats, which was also a thing on there, which is, uh, yeah, anything can happen. Is, hey, listen, I yeah, I bought the bikini bottom. Yeah, it's true. On, it's true. on the, that live stream. So, you know, a, again, that wasn't anything. You had to open that up for me to be able to even purchase it <laughs> that night. So, I, yeah. I mean, anything will happen. And I always said that, you know, when we hit a certain number on Twitch, I don't know if you remember the number, re- but we said if we had 100 people on there. Yeah, we would uh, put that on. So yeah, so we need we need to we need to get a full after dark up to a hundred concurrent, so we can uh, have Evan don the uh, the Amor bikini bottoms. Which, if you haven't seen those chat, it's it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. With my could favorite. scare a lot of people away from uh, you know coming <laughs> back to the chat again or even Very wanting possible. to watch it. But Very possible. I was going to say. If enough people in the Lego Twitch community catch wind of that, I I, I think it can happen. We I think we when you, in that moment when you you offered that as an option, I said I can see that happening. So at some point we will we will. I'd love to see it happen. You know that means that <laughs> things are working for the channel. So yeah, I can't wait to see all the other guests that you have coming on. Are there any particular people that you really want to see on there that you uh, have yet to bring on? Well, tonight I, we got sure uh, Brooks a lot is coming on tonight, and nice. I don't know if I've ever seen him on a live stream, you know, really. So I'm excited to see that. Um, you know, again, getting somebody that maybe not too many people are familiar with, where I've seen a ton of reels from him, and you know, he's he's got some good memes out there of you know himself being the the meme, you know, and that's the space I want to get to is is where. People that are in that space and you see them, but you don't really know them. So um, that's one of them. Somebody from TikTok that, um, you know, I followed. And this isn't even really a Lego account. It's a food account that, you know, I ended up following. And I was a part of his journey from the very beginning to where he is now. You know, he has over 100,000 followers on TikTok. And such a funny account and uh, you know i don't want to drop the name because i want to you know bring him on on there but you know it, it's really branching out of the space of you know just lego people being on it which i could see it really you know being a lot bigger when you start bringing those other personalities that people don't even know about so yeah that's awesome i can't wait to see who you bring on what other kind of things will happen or shenanigans that will take place uh, again, Saturday, uh, Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you check out uh, a full after dark. And and during this live show, uh, when we wrap up recording the live show, we'll uh, send everyone over uh, to the the respective Twitch and YouTube channels. So uh, definitely a lot of fun to be had there. And I, I just I think I love the idea of. These are a bunch of a or just a f- bunch of fans of Lego, but the show itself isn't about the Lego. It's about just hanging out. It's about seeing a group of friends who enjoy each other's company, just hanging out, ha- maybe having some drinks, and then what kind of weird stuff they get into, <laughs> like you said. Like, w- Listen, the most we're ra- weird to begin with. We're playing with plastic, you know. <laughs> that that makes us weird right there at, yeah. at this age. And, you know, we're not just plastics, you know, little Absolutely. mean girls reference. I love it, dude. I, and you, I told Ben this when he was on, I love, I love what you're all doing. Keep it up. I see nothing but great stuff ahead of you. So, and, uh, you know, if you ever, if you ever need anything, let me know in terms of either the show itself, the production, or if you just need, uh, need another person to say hello or come on for a night. So glad to glad to hang out with you guys. You guys are amazing. We talked a little bit about you focusing on the things that make you laugh, the things that in, you know make you want to laugh at when you watch a, a reel. But for you, uh, in addition to that, what what makes a good short form video? What makes a good like reel or TikTok or anything like that? How how did that how how do you make that? I think the the biggest thing that I'm looking for is 
an opening and a good close. That's, you know, it doesn't matter what's in the middle. You can kind of, you know, finagle your way. As long as you have a good start to that reel and then you finish strong, I think a lot of people can appreciate that. Y- you know, that that reel that I did with the the longer reel where, you know, I got the duplicate Lego, you know, it it started off, you know, kind of strong. People were like, where's this going? And then, bam, I hit them with, damn it, another duplicate. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's just making sure that you kind of keep them engaged in the very beginning of it. Um, and, and hopefully they stick around towards the end. Uh, I just did a reel today that, you know, I had a lot of fun with. Um, it was a season two of my family. Um, you know, we called it the creator. So, you know, we did a reel a long time ago where it was kind of like styled, like the family matters intro. Um, and and today we just did another one, which was a lot of fun. So (laughs) I I think for me now where reels are going is now that my kids are getting older, my son loves, loves being a part of the videos. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be, you know, focusing on, it's, it's going to get more, family oriented where you know this is a hobby we all do together and i think he's got more of a comedic relief than i do you know in terms of just being funny he's he's got that personality so i think you know i'm excited for where the journey of my page is going to start going there's something to be said right about that that little shift when you start to bring uh, your kids in on it do you have any like input or thoughts for people who are are thinking about doing something similar since you're starting to navigate this yourself? I mean that that's a big thing like don't worry where you started. You know, it's it's always changing. You don't have to stay in that box of like this is what I was. You know, just like humans, we we all evolve, you know, at at any given point. So, you know, find what you like to do continue to do what you like to do. And if you don't like it and you want to pivot and change a little bit, you can still have a piece of, you know, who you are with a new part of you. So I think that's something everybody needs to take into consideration. You know, when you're making content is it's never going to be where it was in the past. It's always changing. I mean, even on Instagram, the, the, the infamous algorithm, you know, it's always changing. And what do I got to do to keep up with it? You know, don't stay in one lane, you know, you can stay in one, you know, genre of, you know, me, I'm Lego, you know, and I, I stay within that, but I can do a lot of things within that genre. I don't have to just be one thing. And that's a big thing of it. You know, don't get stuck in, I got to be one thing. That's the the main thing I would say. Excellent tip. Definitely. Uh, and it's so true that applies across the board, uh, not just Instagram, but certainly the other the other places like YouTube and and uh, Twitch itself. So, I agree with that completely. In terms of like looking at Instagram, and like you said, like the algorithms always changing and things like that. From a creator's sp- perspective, what what would you tell other people who are trying to grow on Instagram specifically? Like, how can they? be successful uh given whatever it is they want to make i mean you really have to focus on what instagram or whatever social platform you're on you have to focus on what they want you know each platform changes what they're looking for you know for instagram there was you know my biggest growth always happens when i'm doing what they suggest to do and you can follow accounts that are out there that kind of know where the direction of these sites are happening and what to do with it. You know, for example, Instagram, you know, my biggest growth was when reels really were being pushed. And I'm sure a lot of people in the Lego community can even, you know, speak for this. They must've saw me posting four to five reels a day. Mm. And that was, you know, it was reels, reels. That was it. You know, they wanted you to push that. They were trying to keep up with TikTok at the time when they were pushing reels. And I know a lot of accounts hated that. They were all about, hey, I just want to post a picture of Lego. And, you know, it, 
that's fine. You know, if, if you want to post the photo of Lego, do that, you know, and nobody's going to stop you. But if you're looking to grow on a platform, you have to do what the platform's looking for as well. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, somebody was saying earlier, you know, where I could show a behind the scenes, you could have shown a behind the scenes of how you took that photo, how you set it up and, and turned it into a video and then post the picture. Yeah. And that would have been a way for people to, you know, kind of come to your account. And then, you know, everybody was hating on reels for a little bit. So I stopped with the reels and I started doing, you know, posts because posts were coming back a little bit and just showing photos of, you know, Lego and different things that we were doing with that. And then, you know, realizing that, hey, now they want you to do reels and post. And, and it's just, you know, finding what works. And, and now... You know, it, I never liked memes, you know, but somehow on my page, you know, and now I'm posting a lot of memes as well. <laughs> and I'm mixing that in with my, you know, regular, you know, reels that I'm doing. And I think it, it's coming back to being relatable. Like the things I'm posting in a meme, it's something that I'm thinking of. You know, I might see another atmosphere of content out there posting it. It could be a gamer thing. And I see a photo of something and I'm like, wow, I can relate that to Lego really easy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I take that and I make it into a Lego meme. Somehow those have been getting the most reach I've been having recently. Wow. You know, which is crazy because it's like the reels I feel like I put a lot more effort into than a meme. But these memes are getting a farther reach for me. And I am trying to grow my account. So, you know, maybe people in the Lego community might not like it. But I'm not posting things just for the Lego community. And I think that's also where people get stuck is like, you got to make it more generic when you're posting something to get to somebody else outside of the bubble that we're in. Because, I, yes, I do Lego, but I could take Lego and have somebody that, you know, is into cars and they could relate to the thing I'm posting about because it, it sparks something for them. And I'm I'm not stuck in, hey, you know, I need to post something for just the Lego people or the Lego community. That's a big thing of now what's in my head is how can I get this beyond people that are just into Lego? Because Lego accounts, they're going to see the stuff regardless or they're going to find the Lego accounts that they want. And I'm trying to grow my account. You know, a lot of people will say when they're on here, like, I'm not here to make my account grow. And and, you know, that's fine. But everybody, you know, whether they want to say it, they like the likes, they like the views, they like the follows. I mean, otherwise, why else would you make a page in the first place? You know, you might say you don't, but when you start seeing the, you know, the, the back end effect of what you're posting and seeing it hit something, you know, or you get a comment from somebody, how like it made them feel, you want to get that more. You know, yeah. it's that drug of, you know, what you enjoy. So, yeah, that's such a good point, right? Like if, if you're on the platform and you're posting, you can't deny the fact that you, you would enjoy, you know, the likes, the comments, all the engagement that comes with it or else why, why are you on the platform? Right? Like, it, I mean, you can have more than one thing that keeps you on the platform, but, no one's going to say no i don't i don't like the all the attention right <laughs> if you're if you're on the platform you're there's some some little part of you right that that wants that or is cool with it so i like your and your I've had, peop I've had people tell me like i don't care about the followers and, and they tell me that and then i get a message from them you know in my dms like hey what are you doing to to get the growth of this and right behind the scenes like they secretly do like it and you know nothing against that you know and that's fine but let's all be honest with ourselves and and that's again be honest when you post your stuff that's going to be the best way you know for you to be out there is be honest about what you want be honest about how you want to project yourself and the like-minded people are going to find you i think i think your your outlook on that is spot on honestly and i think that's something that people should consider when they're they're trying to 
make things happen, regardless of platform. Because I think this is this is true across the board, uh, not just Instagram, but any of the other things. Right, even right here on Twitch. So yeah, absolutely. I mean Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, whatever platform you're on, you're to the point now where you can reach so many people, and you know you don't. Pe- there's people that are going to find you that like you for you and just be you. That's it. You know, it's real simple. It's the simplest form of content out there being authentic. Absolutely. I agree. You said, you said something really great also about what you're trying to do with your content. And that is you're going beyond the Lego. Like you're still making things relatable. You're still making things that you as a Lego fan appreciate, but because you kind of have this eye towards, Hey, I also want to make it accessible to those that aren't just a falls or that just aren't Lego people. And I think, I think that's something that needs to be stressed because I think that is a tactic that will definitely make you grow. And I think that's something that is uh, pretty wise. So I, I wanted to thank you for that comment because honestly, like, yes, you want to cater to the niche or the, or the category that you're making content for, but then also how do you make yourself relevant to those that might not be as into those things? How do you kind of go beyond your actual uh, typical viewer. And I, th- I think you have the right idea when it comes to that. So I wanted to call that out. So keep doing, keep doing that too. I think that's wonderful. I appreciate that. And listen, that's, everybody should do that. You know, think about it as very basic. Don't put those acronyms that we know mm-hmm. out there, you know, in the Lego community, nobody knows what a full means. Nobody knows what gift with purchase is, you know, between everybody, you know, you you can easily say something about the free set where, you know, right. And and everybody understands free something. So that's going to have a bigger reach than you putting GWP down there. Yeah. That's a great tip. I, I honestly was thinking about that. Not, not too long ago in terms of, because I think at one point I put a full in my, in my profile, just, you know, and then I I remember looking at it, and I'm saying that's that's only going to mean something. Who is also an AFL, but for anyone be like beyond or outside of that that community, they're not going to know what that means, and they're going to stop and say, I, "What what is that? What is what?" So I changed it to just say Lego fan, right? Because then people kind of get that. Oh, okay, this guy, this this person likes Lego, and it's not as. Uh, weird or or uh inaccessible like you said like the gwp that's a perfect example right because not everyone's thinking about that or people outside of our uh our fan or our community group are even gonna understand what that means so that's that's perfect and that's why i put you know lego dad and family you know for my thing in there everybody knows what a lego dad is right everybody's (laughs) Absolutely. No, that, that's great. And that's a great tip. That's certainly, especially if you want your stuff to be more friendly or accessible to those that aren't necessarily uh, a full, or maybe, you know, there's someone who is kind of on the, the out, the outer bounds of that, right? Like they could be an a full, they just don't know it yet. Or they, they, they kind of like Lego, but they don't know all the lingo yet. That's like almost the perfect sweet spot because then, uh, they could very well become more of an a after associating with your content. So, And I think that's the biggest high I got for my page is people that aren't into Lego and they've reached out to me mm-hmm. saying, hey, you know, I bought my first Lego set, you know, and it was, I saw something you did with it and I'm hooked. And I get the biggest joy from that. You know, somebody that tells me, hey, I saw something of yours and now I want to be a part of, you know, that Lego space. So yeah, I, that's a big reason why I try to be generic with it and try to reach somebody that, you know, like you're saying could be on the outskirt of ready to be part of it and they just need that extra push. So. Mm -hmm. 
some great stuff, Evan. I think this is awesome. And I, I, I love the, I think I love the, your, what you, the way you approach all this. This is, this is, I think, really great for those who are trying to figure out what to do here. And I think your approach is, is fantastic. Um, thank you. Thank you for all of this, man. This has been, this has been fun. I, I, I do feel like we, we should start kind of wrapping up, but this, this has been a great conversation and thank you for giving me a little, just a little bit of uh, background and, and some knowledge of who you are and what, what you, you like to do here on the internet. So Thank you. Thank you for being here, Evan. This has been great. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you welcoming me into the Twitchverse, you know, as I'll call it. I don't even know if that's a thing. <laughs> we'll just say that my boomer terminology there. Sure. But, uh, you know, and I, I like the ideas, you know, I my juices are flowing with, you know, things that I want to do now on Twitch. So I'm excited for where the future could be this year for it. So expect some things coming in 2024, we'll say. Absolutely. Uh, well, great. Uh, for those that want to follow uh, Evan here on Twitch, it's it's the same handle he uses most everywhere, Lego uh, Creator, uh, C-R-8-T-O-R. And uh, you can find him on Twitch, Instagram, I believe TikTok as well. And and then, of course, we, we noted this earlier, YouTube, but it's actually Brick Creator, not Lego Creator. So, uh Feel free to to check Evan out on there. He also is a uh, one of the hosts of A Full After Dark, which is also on both Twitch and YouTube. A F O L After Dark. You can find uh, Evan in both those those places. Uh, yeah, this has been this has been wonderful, Evan. Uh, one uh, one last ritual that we have for this show. Uh, is giving you the floor and having you close it out because uh, I can't think of anything better than hearing from our guests. So it could be a piece of wisdom. Um, it could be you just giving any final thoughts, anything you'd like to share. Of course, the floor is yours to close out this episode. Uh, Evan, a.k.a. Lego Creator, the floor is yours. All right. Well, first, thanks again for having me. I mean, I, I really appreciate being on here. Uh, the, the biggest thing, again, that I'm going to stress is just be you. Don't stray away from you. You're your best asset. You're the biggest thing that's different from everybody else out there. You know, nobody else is you in this world. So if you want to be a part of, you know, making content on any platform, you know, be original, be inspiring, show yourself. Don't be afraid. Don't hold back. That's the biggest thing you can do when you're, you know, wanting to be a part of these, you know, platforms out there. People will find you. You might not feel like you're, you know, making an impact out there, but your stuff could hit just that one person that it really changes their aspect of, you know, life and makes them have something that they can now go out and be passionate about as well. So just be yourself. You know, and, and I know that sounds pretty cheesy, but, you know, be you, go out there, do your own thing, and everybody's going to find you that, you know, needs to find you. 